I've checked out a few Indorphy products on the channel now, the last being the impressive Solemn Voice S microphone, an affordable, simple mic that sounded pretty good. Well, Indorphy are back, and this time around, I'm looking at their brand new Live Plus wireless mouse. I've been using this for a few weeks now, so it's about time I told you all what I think. Hi guys, I'm Matt and welcome to Kit Guru. So as I mentioned, this is the Live Plus wireless mouse from Endorphy, a skeletonized, lightweight wireless mouse which comes with a charging dock in the box. It's packing some pretty decent hardware inside of it as well, in the form of kale switches and a PixArt sensor, which I'll go into more detail regarding those later on in the video. Pricing for this thing is around 70 to 80 quid, but at the moment you can only pick one of these up from a select few retailers in mainland continental Europe. Finding one in the UK might be a bit challenging or nigh on impossible, but Endorphy have told me that they're working on securing a UK distributor soon. The Live Plus Wireless is a very gamer looking mouse with a design aimed squarely at FPS and esports players. The body will really appeal to anyone who likes a honeycomb mouse. Almost every surface has been given the Weight Watchers treatment with only the buttons and about two thirds of the bottom being holeless. All that missing plastic does bring the weight down to 69 grams, which is a little higher than I was expecting when I first laid eyes on this mouse, especially when compared to some solid body mice like the M75 Air from Corsair at 60 grams or the Viper V3 Pro from Razer at just 54 grams. With that being said though, 69 grams isn't exactly bulky. The weight on this thing is slightly off-centered towards the back, which isn't something that I usually point out in reviews, but that slight off-centered weight when flicking with the Live Plus jumped out at me from the moment I began using it. There are six buttons in total, the standard setup of left click, right click, scroll wheel and side buttons, and then there's a DPI button that's just behind the scroll wheel. Every button apart from the left click can be reassigned in the software, which I'm gonna go over towards the end of the video. The coating is okay, the only part of that coating that you'll really notice and feel while using it are the left and right click buttons, which the grip of the mouse overall is all right as well. And while the coating and the feel of the mouse doesn't strike me as being as premium as some more expensive mice, it's still adequate and it doesn't pick up fingerprints too much either. There's customizable lighting for any RGB lovers out there, a strip around the base at the rear end of the mouse and an Indorphy logo on the palm rest. These two areas are classed as one lighting zone where customization is concerned. There are six different effects which can be applied to the Live Plus. You've got the usual rainbow, and then alongside that there's stuff like neon, static colors, and various different breathing effects. Overall, it's pretty slim pickings compared to some other mice, but you cover up the lighting with your hand when you use it anyway, so it doesn't bother me too much at all. The scroll wheel also lights up, but that's linked directly to the DPI settings and it will show which level you've currently got selected. You can choose which color applies to which DPI level in the software and you can switch that DPI lighting between static and breathing effects. So there is a little bit of customization with that as well. The bottom of the Live Plus wireless houses the connectivity switch, which toggles between 2.4 gigahertz wireless, Bluetooth, and then turning the mouse off. And then of course on the bottom you've got the PTFE feet, which they are quite small, but they don't seem to hinder the glide of the mouse at all. It easily spins and moves about on my glass mouse pad and it feels really, really smooth. One thing that I love to see was that Endorphi include a spare set of feet in the box, something which I wish every single mouse manufacturer would do. And also included in that box, alongside the 2.4 gigahertz dongle and USB cable, is a magnetic charging dock, as I mentioned earlier on, which when you consider the price and comparing this to some other mice that I've looked at recently, just makes it, in my opinion, fantastic value for money. The dock itself is a small wedge shaped device that sits on your desk and provides a convenient way to charge the mouse when you're not using it. It attaches to the end of the included USB cable and it has a USB port on the front for connecting the wireless receiver. 
It's held in place really well on a desk with some adhesive rubber. And when I say really well, I mean it. This little dot doesn't move at all unless you really want it to. The rubber doesn't leave behind any residue on your desk either if you want to move it around. And it's easy to clean if it gets any dust and stuff stuck to it. I really like this dock. And the only thing that I'd want to see improved is the lighting on it. It has a light strip circle in the bottom, which can only be customized by using a physical button found on the bottom of the dock itself. I think it'd be great if this synced up with the lighting settings that are applied to the mouse in the software. Now, while I'm pretty impressed with the design and the value of the Live Plus wireless, build quality does leave a little to be desired, which is kind of relative to the price point and what the whole package is bringing to the table. There is a slight flex to the body when squeezing the mouse, and there's very slight cracking noises when the plastic flexes when put under some pressure. Pre and post travel continue with this kind of subpar quality trend. The left and right click buttons do have a bit of play to them before the switches are actuated. The hardware found inside the Live Plus Wireless consists of a Pixar PAW3395 sensor. That's an incredibly popular sensor which is capable of up to 26,000 DPI, tracking at up to 650 IPS and handling acceleration of up to 50G. It's also got adjustable lift-off distance, either one or two millimeters, and it's got a motion sync toggle which can be turned on and off in the software. Polling rate caps out at 1000 Hz, which in my opinion is fine for 99% of gamers and it's going to hopefully help to prolong the battery life when compared to wireless mice with higher polling rates. The switches are Kale GM 8.0s, which are rated as lasting for up to 80 million clicks. That's plenty for even the most hardcore of cookie clicker players. The switches do feel good though once you've got past the pre and post travel that I mentioned a second ago. They're clicky, tactile and pretty satisfying to use. Now being a wireless mouse, the battery will obviously be a big part of using this thing day in, day out. And Endorphy claim on their website that the Live Plus wireless will last 160 hours on one charge. That's not up to 160 hours. They boldly claim that you'll get 160 hours from one charge of this mouse. And there's no mention of having to run the lighting disabled or running at the minimum polling rate or having it connected via Bluetooth which I'm going to stick my neck out and hazard a guess at that that 160 hours is going to be with the lighting off and when using the Bluetooth connection. Using the mouse with the dock connected via 2.4 GHz wireless and with the lighting on 100% brightness, I've been getting absolutely nowhere near 160 hours out of this mouse. I haven't done any specific measurements of the battery life, but it's been averaging somewhere between 15 to 20 hours which is some way off that 160 hours listed on their website. But the saving grace is I've always had the dock on the desk right next to me. So when I'm not using it, I can just stick it on there and it's a convenient way to just make sure it's charged. That, that's kind of made it a non-issue, but it's still something that I had to point out for the review. As for compatibility, the Live Plus Wireless is listed as being compatible with the following. This is quite the list. Windows, Linux, Xbox, Android, Smart TVs, Mac OS, PlayStation, Switch, and iOS. A ridiculous list. There's nothing it can't connect to. That list makes me wonder if I can connect it to my Wi-Fi enabled washing machine. I've been playing a lot of Hell Let Loose recently and the Live Plus Wireless hasn't skipped a beat performance wise. I've had no sensor skipping, no spin outs. It's been tracking well on my glass pad, the SkyPad 3. And I'm really getting used to using lightweight mice because recently I've tested and reviewed quite a few different ones. And this one, while I wouldn't go as far as to say it's my favorite, it's performed well and it's kept up with my pretty casual skill level quite easily. One thing I'm not a huge fan of though is the honeycomb design on the sides. It's very noticeable when you rest your thumb under the side buttons. And for me at least, it would feel much better with solid plastic on the sides instead. Customizing the Live Plus Wireless can be done with the dedicated software that's found on Endorphy's website. The software serves its purpose, but it does feel a little rushed and like it could do with a bit more polish and a few quality of life updates. Just little stuff like having the option to close it to the taskbar instead of quitting the program altogether. It does minimize to the taskbar by default, 
but there's no option to control that sort of stuff, which would be a nice addition. There are five tabs within this software to customize the mouse in total. The first, the little house icon, contains all of the options for remapping buttons, adjusting debounce time, and managing profiles. The mouse does remember the last settings that are configured when the software is closed though, so you can configure it and then just close it if you want to. The next icon across, the crosshair looking thing, is where you'll find options for changing DPI and configuring up to six DPI steps, which can then be cycled through with the button on top of the mouse. Then there's the polling rate options, adjustable lift off distance that I mentioned. Then there's toggles for motion sync, ripple control and angle snapping. And then there's a few options for configuring the DPI indicator light and changing the colors and whatnot. The M icon at the top houses the options for creating and recording macros, if that's your thing. The sun icon, funnily enough, handles the lighting options, which as I mentioned earlier, are pretty slim. And then finally, the cog icon are where all of the more general settings are, but there aren't too many at all. There's a toggle for starting the software on boot, a language drop-down box, firmware information, a pairing tool, which funnily enough is not needed for normal use, and the software even goes as far as to warn you against using it. And then there's finally a long distance mode. In conclusion then, the Live Plus Wireless has both its good points and its bad points. I like the design, which is quite subjective, I know, but it's a decent looking mouse in my opinion. The charging dock is a great inclusion. It makes charging convenient, it's worked flawlessly, and it's a really welcome addition to the mouse, especially when you consider the price for the whole package. It's really good value for money, something which is becoming increasingly important for a lot of people in recent times. The lighting, while simplistic in its implementation, does look and work okay. It's nothing that blew me away though. The build quality was slightly disappointing. The body flexes a little bit too much for my liking. And then finally, the battery life, at least for me, has been nowhere near the claims from Endorphi. If it wasn't for that included charging dock, I'd be moaning a bit more about the battery. Overall, it's an okay mouse, which will serve gamers well that don't fancy shelling over a lot more money for similar mouse and dock pairings or offerings from other brands. And that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like down below if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to KitGuru to keep up with the latest PC gaming news and reviews. And head down below the video to find links to our merch store, our Patreon page, our Discord server, and our website if you want to check any of that stuff out. Anyway, I've been Matt. This has been the Live Plus Wireless Mouse from Endorphi. I'll speak to you in the next one. Look after yourselves. See you later.